What if you want to buy a CPU air cooler, but you want to get the best bang for your buck? You don't need something super expensive or super cheap, but something with a nice balance of price and performance. What's the best mid-range air cooler you can buy right now? That's the question this video aims to answer. I've taken six of the best and most popular mid-range air coolers on the market right now, all priced between $50 to $70. I've analyzed and tested them and then come to a conclusion on what the best mid-range air cooler is right now. Today's contestants are the Noctua NHU-14S, the Noctua NHU-12S, the MSI Core Frozer L, the Fantex PHTC-12DX, the Scythe Ninja 5, and the Be Quiet Dark Rock Slim. Out of all these mid-range coolers, which one is the best? Let's test them out and see. The first category I'll be comparing these coolers on is price. These are the current US Amazon prices, rounded up to the nearest dollar. The Core Frozer L leads the pack with the cheapest price at $57. Then the NHU-12S is $1 more at $58. Then the PHTC-12DX, the Dark Rock Slim, and the Ninja 5 all hitting the $60 mark. And finally, the NHU-14S coming in at the most expensive at $64. There's only a $7 price difference between the cheapest cooler here and the most expensive, so price is not going to be a big factor in this comparison. But it is always something good to keep in mind for those who want to save every penny. Common sense also dictates that the most expensive coolers are often the best, but as we saw in my last video, that is definitely not always the case. So it will be interesting to see if the more expensive coolers here perform better or not. We'll find out later in this video. The next category to compare these coolers on is compatibility. Will they fit in your case and can they mount to your motherboard? I used PC Part Picker's compatibility tool to estimate how many cases and motherboards each cooler was compatible with. We can see that the Core Frozer L leads the pack yet again, with the highest compatible cases and the highest compatible motherboards. This is due to its relatively short height and very versatile motherboard compatibility. Next comes the NHU-12S which misses out on the compatibility king by only a couple hundred cases and motherboards. Then the PHTC-12DX and the Dark Rock Slim are essentially tied for compatibility in the middle. Next is the Ninja 5, which has top tier case compatibility due to its relatively short height, but isn't able to be used on quite a few motherboards, although it is still compatible with the most popular motherboard formats of LGA-1151 and AM4. Then last is the NHU-14S, which takes a big hit in case compatibility due to its very tall height of 165 millimeters. But as a saving grace, it does still have decent motherboard compatibility. Next, we'll be looking at the installation of each of these coolers. How easy are they to install into your system? I've ranked each cooler's ease of installation from easiest to hardest. First, the easiest cooler to install, the Ninja 5. Despite its large size, the Ninja 5 is a dream to install. Scythe has the best visual instructions in the business, making it very easy to see how the cooler should be installed. The fan clips are relatively easy and I had no problems whatsoever. The next easiest cooler to install is the NHU-12S. No problems installing this one other than slightly difficult fan clips. Next is the other Noctua cooler, the NHU-14S. The installation is very similar to the NHU-12S, but it's quite a bit larger, making it more difficult to install the fan clips. Then the Dark Rock Slim. No issues with this cooler's installation, but it does have a few more steps than the others. Nearing the bottom of the list, we come to the PHTC-12DX. It's not super hard to install, but it has some confusing instructions and difficult fan clips. Then we come to the hardest cooler to install out of all of these, the Core Frozer L. The Core Frozer L won our last two comparisons, but here it comes in dead last. It has some extra steps to install and the screws keep falling out of the back plate, making it extremely frustrating to attach the mounting hardware to your motherboard. Eventually, I did get it installed after quite a bit of time and struggle, but it was definitely not a pleasant experience. Now let's take a good look at these coolers and rank them on their appearance. How visually appealing are they? I've ranked them here from best looking to worst looking, in my own personal opinion. Everyone's opinion of looks will vary though, so I'll give you a good look at each cooler so you can make your own decision as well. My number one choice in appearance goes to the Ninja 5. I just really love the dark color scheme and the cool Shuriken logo. It's also huge and unique looking, which makes it really stand out in your case. My second favorite looking cooler in this roundup is the Dark Rock Slim. I think it has a great understated look 
and the all black color scheme is quite nice. It's also very slim, as the name implies, which means you can show off all your RAM. My third choice for appearance is the Core Frozer L. It's the only cooler in this lineup that has lighting, although the lighting is not customizable RGB lighting. I think it looks pretty nice with its red, black, and silver color scheme. It definitely screams gamer, though, so not the best choice if you're into a subtle or professional look. My fourth choice in appearance is the NHU-12S. It has the typical Noctua brown fans, which are a major turnoff for some people. Personally, I don't think it looks terrible, but definitely not my ideal choice of color. I think the silver heatsink and the overall package does look very professional, though. Next is the NHU-14S. It basically looks like an enlarged NHU-12S, with the same brown fans and design, just much larger. I think the large size makes it look a bit more awkward, but overall very similar to the NHU-12S. And lastly, my least favorite appearance choice goes to the PHTC-12DX. I'm just not a fan of the black and white color scheme, and something about this cooler just looks cheap to me. I know some people on my last video said they liked the design of these Fantex coolers, so your opinion could be totally different from mine, and that's fine. Appearance is very subjective. Now let's cut the crap and get to what you've all been waiting for, the performance benchmarks. How well do these coolers actually cool your CPU? I tested each of these coolers at five different fan speeds, from lowest to highest, with a 95 watt CPU heat load. I recorded temperatures and noise levels at each fan speed and graphed the results. This allows you to see exactly how each cooler performs over the full range of its capability. It's important to note in these graphs that lower is better. We want the lowest temperatures and the lowest noise, so the lines that are lowest and to the left are the best. First off, starting at the lowest fan speeds, we can see that the NHU-12S and the Dark Rock Slim get very hot. This is likely due to their smaller heatsink compared to the other coolers, making them very poor without good airflow. Next, we can see the NHU-14S, the Core Frozer L, and the PHTC-12DX all around the same temperature. Then finally, the Ninja 5 has the best low fan speed performance by far, producing excellently low temperatures, likely due to its huge heatsink. Now we get to middle fan speeds, and we can see the coolers break away from each other more. The NHU-14S is the clear winner here, a few degrees cooler than the rest. Then the Ninja 5 and the NHU-12S are in a relative tie. Then comes the PHTC-12DX and the Dark Rock Slim behind it. Then lastly, the Core Frozer L, which is clearly lagging behind the other coolers. At high fan speeds, things are basically the same as middle fan speeds, with the NHU-14S as the clear winner. Two of the coolers also produce excessive noise without much drop in temperature, the PHTC-12DX and the Core Frozer L. So looking at these results, we can create an overall ranking in performance. Number one is the NHU-14S clearly producing lower temperatures than the rest of the coolers, except at the lowest fan speeds, where the Ninja 5 pulls ahead, giving the Ninja 5 the number two spot. Number three goes to the NHU-12S, which has excellent performance at high and middle fan speeds, but gets extremely hot at low fan speeds. Number four is a tie between the Dark Rock Slim and the PHTC-12DX. Both perform fairly similarly, but the PHTC-12DX produces excessive noise at the high end, while the Dark Rock Slim gets very hot at the low end. And last place goes to the Core Frozer L. It just gets hotter than the rest of all of these, and also produces excessive noise at high fan speeds, making it the biggest loser here. Now let's add the NHD-15S, the winner of my high-end air cooler roundup, to see how it compares to these mid-range coolers. We can see that the NHG-15S performs almost identically to the NHU-14S. Really impressive performance by the NHU-14S, considering it costs $16 less. However, the NHU-14S is taller, so it does have worse compatibility than the NHG-15S. Now let's look at how these coolers perform with a very high heat load, 185 watts. This graph is relevant for those of you who overclock, or do very CPU intense tasks, like video encoding or rendering. I've omitted the lowest fan speeds in this graph because all of these coolers will overheat the CPU at the lowest speeds. Here we can see again the NHU-14S is outperforming the competition. It has lower temps in almost all cases, 
except at lower fan speeds, where the Ninja 5 again reigns supreme with its huge heatsink, allowing it to dissipate heat without much airflow. The Ninja 5 is also able to achieve the lowest noise of all these. The NHU-12S performs similarly to the Ninja 5, but can't reach the lower noise levels due to overheating. Then the PHTC-12DX comes in around the middle of the pack. The Dark Rock Slim has a fairly poor showing here, and the Core Frozer L comes in dead last, just as before. So overall, we can rank these coolers high heat performance, with the NHU-14S at number one, the Ninja 5 at number 2, the NHU-12S at number 3, the PHTC-12DX at number 4, the Dark Rock Slim at number 5, and the Core Frozer L at number 6. Now let's add our high-end cooler winner, the NHD-15S, to see how it compares. Here we can see, in this high heat scenario, the NHD-15S performs better than all of them, even the mighty NHU-14S. In the end, you do get a bit better performance when you pay for the more expensive high-end cooler. But it's not much, especially considering the NHU-14S performs almost identically at more reasonable heat levels. Finally, we've reached our final category of comparison, warranty. How long are these companies going to support these products, and how long do they expect them to last? Coming in on top are the two Noctua coolers, the NHU-12S and the NHU-14S both having six year warranties. This is a great long warranty period that should outlast at least a few builds if you plan on using these coolers for a long time. Next comes the PHTC-12DX at five years, which is also more than enough time. Then the Dark Rock Slim at three years, which is not great, but acceptable. Then the Ninja 5 at two years, which is not the best and does make you question size support of the product a bit. Then the Core Frozer L with one year, which is just an absolute minimum token warranty, but I suppose it's better than nothing. So now that we've analyzed and tested these coolers in all the most important ways, it's time to come to the final most important question of all. Which one of these coolers should you buy if you want the best mid-range air cooler? First, I'm going to give a runner-up award to a cooler that almost reaches the top, the Scythe Ninja 5. The Ninja 5 is very reasonably priced, has great case compatibility, is the easiest cooler of all these to install, has an amazing unique look, and has the best low fan speed performance in this roundup. It does fall behind in a few areas like poor motherboard compatibility, a short warranty, and doesn't quite reach the highest performance levels of my number one pick. Therefore, my number one pick goes to the Noctua NHU-14S. The NHU-14S has absolutely outstanding performance for the price, beating all the coolers in this roundup, and even matching the performance of much more expensive high-end coolers. It also has an industry-leading six-year warranty, so you know you can count on it to last through many builds. However, it does have a few flaws, like being very tall, so it won't fit in some cases, and some people are turned off by the brown fans. If these are issues for you, then the Ninja 5 is a great alternate pick that performs almost as well as the NHU-14S but the NHU-14S wins the award of overall best mid-range cooler due to its amazing cooling performance that easily beats out the rest of the competition. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and hit subscribe to see more computer part reviews coming soon. If you really want to help out, hit the share button to share this video with others on places like Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, forums, and other social media. I greatly appreciate all your support, and I hope this video helped you make better consumer decisions. See you next time.